Welcome back to another video of Guild Wars 1 in 2024. Here we are playing as a monk on the Kurzik side in Fort Aspenwood. Here my elite skill is Restore Conditions. So uh, I have another monk on my team, which is good for focusing on the healing. My focus here is removing conditions. And I still have some good heals and healing spell prayers with Patient Spirit and Signet Rejuvenation. But I think as I was playing Fort Asimwood on this day, I noticed the enemy team did bring lots of conditions. So Restore Condition was my counter to this. And it was pretty successful in this match. There you can see Divine Intervention saving me. And on myself, I'll cast Shield of Absorption. So every time they hit me, every time I take damage, it'll be reduced by five. And Shield of Absorption lasts for, I think, five seconds with my protection prayers set at where they're at. Five or six seconds. Then, of course, I have Shield Bond, too. So if I take more than 50 damage, I'll uh, take Heal for something like 70 uh, health points. It's another protection prayers uh, spell. And then Cure Hex. So Cure Hex is a healing uh, prayer spell. And it does have a nice heal as long as, as well as removing a Hex. So I can't use Restore Condition on myself. So whatever conditions I have, I just kind of put them stuck with unless the other monk on my team removes them. But oftentimes I play that way with draw conditions, in which I don't remove conditions off myself either, and I'm kind of okay with it. It's kind of a silly battle to get into with all this knockdown. I'm kind of surprised I was able to heal myself and last that long. And again, Divine Intervention saving me for a second there. Now this match too, Peace and Harmony would have been a good elite to bring, because I have a lot of hexes as well. Peace and Harmony, its recharge is 10 seconds, but it does remove like 5 or 6 conditions and hexes. And then for something like 3 seconds, uh, hexes and conditions expire 90% faster on your ally. So it removes them and also is a short enchantment. So it's a good skill. But Restore Conditions is nice to focus on the conditions themselves. It has a quick recharge, has a nice heal. Here you can see I'll use it on a lot of my allies here as we fight to control this green gate.
Their team definitely has some nice damage here and some good distraction with these uh, Bone Fiends, Bone Horrors, and these Luxon Warriors that are charging in. Sometimes the Luxon Warriors will glitch and they'll just stand there and not attack you or your allies. And in which case you can just leave them alone, not even really attack them. Uh, but here they're doing damage. But right outside the green gate, if my allies do drop, they do resurrect pretty quickly and a very convenient spot. So it's not so bad. Of course, I should be keeping them alive as the monk, but if they do drop, it's not the end of the world, so to speak. see here I'm kind of missing some of these heals so kind of my bad on that one Restore conditions used to be used for a while in GVG. Uh, you'd usually have two monks, one with healing bursts or something like word of healing, that would also carry like draw conditions perhaps, and then you'd have a second restore condition monk, and then uh, that was a pretty good setup. You can see their pressure really died back down though. Perhaps it was healing those gates that really helped us, but they were right up there at Green Gate dropping us. But now we've had about a minute here of just no action really. I'm trying to get my teammate to target the Siege Turtle. We really need to take them down. That's really the key thing to do here. And two, when the sea turtles hit, they'll remove my enchantment. So taking them down is going to help our team out in a myriad of ways.
So here they go. They're busting through the green gates. They drop me. And now it's a battle to keep these gatekeepers alive and keep Master Architect Gunther safe. Alright, so good game, but ultimately, uh, this one, we win. So, thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for more videos.